What's up my friends? Welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff and this is another unique video that makes you think, I have never considered that question, but now I must know the answer. Most YouTube videos are viewed on phones. That's a fact. So with that in mind, should we be optimizing our audio to sound good on phones? And if so, what can we do to improve it while still keeping it sounding good on larger speakers? This is one of those videos where I really went down the rabbit hole a bit and it started to break my brain. Also, I did lots of research and testing and I had some help from a buddy who's been doing audio engineering for over 20 years now. So let's do it. If you don't already know, I now have a non-profit Patreon for this channel in which any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel, buy gear, review it, and then I give it away to backers. It's inexpensive to be a backer, just the cost of a cup of coffee. So if that's of interest, if you like this channel and if you like giveaways, check it out. It's in the description box below. A lot of videos out there encourage you to listen to the videos on good speakers or headphones, something like that. In this case, I encourage you to watch it on a phone to get the full effect. So I'm going to engage my optimized for mobile phones audio now. And what do you think? I've done so many small tweaks that really kind of add up to uh, really suit what a phone sounds like. And by the way, this video might also have application in the audio mixing world because I know quite a few audio engineers and all of them now check mixes on their phones. Anyway, now let's go straight to my interview with my buddy Ben from Axon Trap Studios in Wells, for whom I had questions regarding audio and that's what he does. So let's do that now. Okay, viewers, we're here with Ben from Axon Trap Studios in Wells, UK. Some say the best studio in the UK. <clears throat> Some say, <laughs> maybe. It's an opinion, changed my mind. So, uh, Really lucky to have Ben here. Uh, you've been doing this for what, more than 20 years now, something like that, haven't you? Mm. Yeah, yeah, I guess since, yeah. yeah. So, so in that time, we've gone from having uh, no mobile phones to everyone having one. Mm. And have you found that in that time you've, you've kind of changed your workflow because, you know, maybe more people are checking out their music on a phone or more, phone, you know, more people are going to be listening to music on a phone. Has that changed your workflow at all? Uh, I guess a little bit. Um, I suppose I've only really got kind of, I guess, what I would call professional and the phones have been there that kind of whole time. But uh, yeah, you do have to definitely think about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I quite often will listen to a mix when the... done maybe in the evening, just on my phone quickly when I'm maybe cooking some food. Okay. In and, the... um, and in the way you record it, different different mics at all? Or has that just stayed the same since the, the dawn of uh, time, I don't know, you know if you would use different mics, but you definitely... Yeah. I might listen to, say, a mix of a song, and I'm like, oh, I've obviously got way too much reverb okay. on the vocal. I think it's a, the same with little radios, all those things, because they have sort of inherent distortion. They bring up any of that stuff, like so, effects or like a roomy sound. So effects and reverb are gonna be out of control on a phone, that's what you're saying on the, on the whole. Yeah, it can sound good yeah. in the studio, and then yeah. these sm stuff, yeah, it just, it just brings that stuff up. The same with like too much compression. Okay. It can sound cool in there, and probably sounds cool, a nice hi-fi, but it's just gonna sound a bit mushy. Okay. So you kind of definitely think about that Yeah. Uh, in terms of, because everyone listens to a song, I guess the same as videos, like, uh, Probably, or they just listen to it quickly on a phone. So that's like might be the first time they hear it. Yeah, and, and, if, it, and if it sounds really like squishy and and that's the reason why I'm asking this is because I'm putting together this video where um, I, I'm yeah the the vast majority of YouTube videos now are watched on a phone. Mm. So it got me thinking, you know, people are not they're not watching it on uh, you know on a laptop or uh, or. TV or anything that so much it's it's mainly a phone yeah so I mean you definitely need to watch out you hear it on videos all the time like really s -y kind of F, the s sounds some some condenser mics just pick them up in a really horrible okay way so you even need to be fixing that kind of stuff in post or thinking about it when you're recording because they're just going to jump out with that little, little speaker mm. yeah I've noticed on YouTube videos so many YouTubers use the Shure SM7B mm. and, you know, they've obviously got it in shot really close. Um, 
Why do you think that is? Because it's not my preferred microphone. I like a condenser that I can have further away. Yeah. But what um, do you think? Well, they're fairly indestructible and relatively affordable. Okay. And, and I think they they record S's quite, or not, some voices quite a bit smoother. Uh. Some condensers can be really like, tss, tss, and it's quite hard to get rid of that. And it's quite time consuming. So I think just SM7 kind of, you know, like Joe Rogan style, just sort of there. It's quite a safe bit. Yeah. And I also guess people see them and then they buy them because. Yeah, it's, just, it's the mic that people see. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. but, but they're good. You, you can almost stick those on any singer and they're and it's usable mm. when other mics are more fussy. So I guess that's similar. So, okay, so with everything in mind, what are some kind of takeaway tips for for me and for the viewers, many of which are, you know, YouTubers and videographers? You know, what, yeah. what are a few, like, simple takeaway things that we can think about? Yeah, don't yeah. rely on anything too stereo, because some phones are just mono. Okay. Um, so I don't, that's more of a musical thing. But um, yeah. Uh, some, yeah, some phones are just not going to... If you've got some kind of immersive stereo, you know, it's not going to... But that's kind of obvious. And yeah, watch out for S's because because some even really pro videos you can watch them in this. But then maybe it just bugs me. Maybe yeah. most people don't care. But you can so really hear. Think, would you would you just like maybe roll off a little bit of the top end? Maybe you or... you'd really have to use a a, DS a proper DSer. Okay. Or record it. The best thing is just to record. You can just move okay. the mic slightly or use a different mic, and um, okay, it can make a big difference. There's loads of tips. There'll be loads of videos online about yeah. how to. We can do that. And yeah, then if you're going to e e EQ, pop, just high pass a bit of like some of the lows out. And then if it's a little, if you're struggling to hear it a bit, you can maybe add add some mid somewhere. Just always cut some low frequency out. Well, yeah, probably. Yeah. Like the sub sub stuff. under a no, hundred hertz, that kind of something like that. Yeah. yeah probably, okay. You know. um, and, and cut then, some mid as well. You said or add. Oh. You know, especially on a phone because they're they're only. You know, sometimes you can really make a vocal more audible by. It depends on the sound of the voice, but yeah, you know, some some kind of more mid range. Okay. Sort of lower mid stuff can definitely help, but then some people sound a bit muddy, so you would, you just got to listen. But yeah, and just don't do too much. Don't, Use don't your go, ears. Don't go. Don't just don't go nuts. Um, Use your ears and adjust. and compress. You can probably compress stuff quite a bit. Yeah. Because again, if someone's listening to a video and there's background noise and. That's know, a good tip. Okay, um, but yeah, just not too much, not too much compression. Um, but yeah, amazing. Yeah. All right, thanks very much. Anything else before we go? Uh, <laughs> I don't, can't think of anything. No. Thanks very much. Right, back to other half. So I took some time to digest everything that Ben had said, and then I got to work. And my first thought when it came to improving phone audio was distortion. You know when you really crank the volume on a phone and it starts to break up? So I used one of these, a reference microphone, which in theory gives you a really flat sort of linear response, so you can really tell what's happening. And with this I recorded pink noise from my phone. Pink noise, if you're not familiar with it, is a bit like white noise, but where white noise is just hissy high frequencies, pink noise is all the frequencies. And to tell you what, this is white noise and this is pink noise. The goal of this exercise was to find the harshest frequencies and then tame them. So I recorded some pink noise on my phone, which is an iPhone 7 Plus, yes, I know it's a little bit old now, but it does the job, as well as a few other much newer phones. I recorded at medium and then max volume, and the results were surprisingly similar in terms of frequency response. I then used a spectral analyzer to see what was happening. That looks like this. Now, this is the multimeter that you get with Apple software, and it's okay, but I prefer using this one, which is the spectral denoise plugin from Isotope. Of course, we're not actually using the denoising function, and all I'm looking at is this orange line. At this end, we can see the high frequencies, and straight away I can see lots of spikes all over the place, and with EQ, I can target these and just subtly knock them down a little. This is just using the basic EQ plugin in Final Cut, and by no means does it have to be this one. Almost any EQ plugin will do the job. Next, I wanted to do the same thing, but look at the bass frequencies. Ben's advice on this was to use a low-cut filter, and that's something that I would do anyway, 
but I think in this case, it might be good to be a little more aggressive. After all, phone speakers are tiny and may find it tricky to reproduce those really low sub frequencies. Let's go back to our pink noise. So there was a surprising bump under 100 Hertz, but that could be rumble from the table the phone was sat on or just general room rumble. Either way, it's got to go as phone speakers are not generally that good at reproducing bass. So I'm adding a low cut to completely get rid of those sub bass frequencies. They're inaudible and just taking up valuable headroom. I also want to add a gentle roll off of the bass. So the lower the frequency, the quieter the volume. This shouldn't make things sound thin or anything. I just want to tame frequencies that small speakers are not so good at reproducing. And then the mid frequencies, arguably the most important for playing audio on a phone because that's where vocal frequencies sit. The frequencies between 250 to 1000 Hertz are a little bit lacking. So I'm gonna do as Ben suggested and add a subtle boost to balance things out just a bit. One other thing I noticed is when you increase your phone's volume, it doesn't boost the frequencies in a linear fashion. Comparing the spectral analyzer at mid and high volume, you can see that actually it's just the high mid frequencies that are being pushed when you increase the volume. In fact, the low frequencies are actually more pronounced on the mid volume version. So there's a tip. Don't max out your volume. Next onto compression and to make things loud and less dynamic or to keep things natural but more dynamic. Now Ben's advice was to use a good deal of compression so I wanted to see the effect it had and which one I preferred so I uploaded three versions of a clip from a previous video that I did. One without compression at all, one with very light compression and the third one with heavy compression. I say heavy, I just mean heavier. Nothing that you wouldn't use in real life. I'm certainly not kind of smashing the hell out of it. And here's a snippet of what these three clips sound like, starting from no compression, then to light and then heavy. Tip one, I'm gonna go into preferences and under the general tab, I'm going to uncheck the box saying show reference waveforms. Tip one, I'm gonna go into preferences and under the general tab, I'm going to uncheck the box saying show reference waveforms. Tip one, I'm gonna go into preferences and under the general tab, I'm going to uncheck the box saying show reference waveforms. And then I listened to these three on my phone, obviously. And of course I had to see how it sounded with AirPods then through my Mac, through the built-in speakers, through my TV. As you can see, I got this shot with a little help from my human female clone. The sound was actually playing out of a Cambridge Audio soundbar. Finally, I then tried it through my car stereo. Very surprisingly to me anyway, I preferred in all cases, the version with the most compression. And as I said, I did it without knowing which one's which. I closed my eyes, I cycled through and in all cases, the heaviest compressed one won. So don't take this as a general rule or anything, but in this case, on my vocal, the more assertive compression for the win. And I have to admit, I was a little surprised by this. And that's just because audio guys on the whole, they like a little bit of compression, but they also really value dynamics. So I thought I would opt for more dynamics. Long-term viewers will know that I actually came from an audio background, that's what I studied. So yeah, I was surprised, but I'm really happy to be wrong on this kind of thing. Um, I mean, that's how we learn, isn't it? Here are my compression settings. Won't be massively useful to you, but you know, as a, as a starting point maybe, because of course, you know, your levels are gonna be completely different to mine, but if they're helpful, great. I also played around with the possibility of using a multiband compressor and if you're not familiar with these, it's where you can compress different areas of the frequency spectrum independently. So a really cool, potentially very powerful tool. But the upshot was that actually things sounded pretty similar to my other process. And I also considered that for non-audio geeks, opening a plugin that looks like this can be a little on the intimidating side of things. It's incredibly nerdy and probably just too much information for most people to care about. Much like my videos, eh? A last little bonus pro tip from my buddy Ben was that actually when he records vocal tracks, he'll use multiple instances of different compressors and then he'll layer them up, each of them not doing a lot, just knocking off a little bit of gain. And I tried this, you're hearing it right now. And I loved 
the result. Mix engineers like Ben argue that each style of compressor adds a little bit of colour, and so I think I'm going to do this from now on. Bear in mind these plugins are not taxing on your CPU like some plugins can be, so it's absolutely fine to just layer them up. The other question is, after all of this, after all the tweaks, does it sound weird on other devices? And well, not really. It sounds different, but that is to be expected. Overall, I would say the smaller the speaker size that I played this on, the more these tweaks made sense. And that makes perfect sense to me. On bigger speakers, which can produce a wider frequency range, that's when it started to sound a little more on the narrow side. Anyway, now let's gather up all of my findings from this video and cobble together some tips for optimizing audio that's destined to be played on a phone. On the whole, the spiky high frequencies were around 2 to 4K, so some selective surgical reduction of these is not a bad idea. I also found that gently rolling off the high end from around 10K didn't have a negative effect on my audio. In fact, it had a nice effect on my voice without using a de -esser. On the subject of de for voice tracks, I would really like to be able to recommend using these, but the truth of the matter is I don't like what they do to vocal tracks. Before you comment, I own some of the very best plugins from Isotope and even applied subtly, I hear a destructive difference. Plus, they're really expensive, so personally, I prefer Ben's tip of moving the microphone or the aforementioned tip of targeting spiky areas with EQ and just pulling them down a bit. Sub bass frequencies are simply not required for playing audio on a phone, so cut them out with a low cut filter. The mid frequencies between 250Hz and 1K, you can boost slightly. This is optional, of course, and it really depends on what's happening in your audio track. Too much of these frequencies may lead to a more boxy sound. I found that low frequencies are less affected by volume than high and mid, so for richer sounding audio, don't blast the volume. More compression without going crazy sounded the best to me. Assertive was, I think, the word I used. It's a personal preference, as most of this is, but certainly worth considering. As Ben mentioned, keeping your audio more on the mono side of things is a good idea. And of course, not forgetting our bonus little tip of using multiple compressors, of which the cumulative sound I really enjoy. Just thinking of some scenarios where some panning might be appropriate for video would be something like an interview. You might want to do some slight panning left right on the interviewee interviewer. And this is one occasion where if you're shooting an interview for YouTube, of which I've done quite a bit over the last few months, I'm certainly gonna keep everything mono. Anyway, that's it for now. This was seriously a trip down the rabbit hole and I'm just glad to be out the other side now and I hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've now made hundreds of videos about audio and video on this channel, of which YouTube has recommended this video for you to watch next and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.